Hey everyone, I'm back. How are you doing? Uh, thank you so much uh, to our early subscribers, even before I got on. Mac Burnout with a four month resub, and also Ghetto Porridge with a 23 month resub. Just one away from the big two four, the two year. Thank you so much, Ghetto Porridge. Um, uh, a ad asks, uh, how did Carlson do in Bergen, uh, in, in London? And was it a third place? Yes. He ended up, uh, in the third, on, on, uh, it's been a while since my last stream. I think I'm going to have to get accustomed to this talking. <laughs> on the other hand, at least I'm talking much better than I was. Uh, last chess stream I did, where I barely had a voice at all. Uh, Magnus did finish third. Um, it was okay. Um, he didn't gain any rating, nor did he lose any. So I, I think he was disappointed he didn't manage to get into the final. Um, but at least he won the, the third place match uh, against Aronian, so that's good. Not the best hair day? Okay, Perpetual. I'll, I'll keep that in mind. I'll see if someone else has the same opinion. Uh, but the reason for it not being the best, not the best hair day is quite logical. Seeing as how I half an hour ago took a scissors and did this. And honestly, I feel good. That's the important part. It is less hair than I had an hour ago, and I'm feeling happy about that. And then the kind of... Its functionality as a unit may have been somewhat broken by me just cutting randomly into it. <laughs> Thank you, Ghetto Porridge. I think it's pretty okay as well. I'm happy that I got rid of some, some of it. Hey Flo, how are you doing? Hey Vertridge. You heard Hammer was on the whiskey. I, I would check my sources working class hero because that sounds that sounds like if it was true it would be front page news. Um and also I don't think it is true. At least I don't remember such an occasion. And then do with that information what you, what you will. Ask Trent how to get rid of hair. Um, actually, Perpetual, I have quite a bit of boldness in my family. Both my dad and my dad's dad. They both had bold spots in the middle of their heads in their like 40s, I think. Um, so I'm not too concerned about having too much hair. At, at times it gets to be too much, but um, in general, I'm happy that I have some. My dad also got gray hair at like 22 or 23. So I'm, I'm pretty happy I'm already 29 and, you know, still have this magnificent... Every time, like, the, the makeup uh, ladies uh, are fixing my makeup and kind of doing the hair and the whole thing, of which I have done a bit this past week since I was doing the TV broadcasts, uh, they just... Everyone says, oh, you have such magnificent hair. Because makeup people and stylists and stuff... They really care about whether or not hair is like lumptious. No, maybe that's the wrong word. But like they care that it's it's got volume and that it's quite big because that gives them more. I think my theory is that that gives them more options of styling because you can always take away here, but you can never add more. Hey, bald android. Yes, you did hair. Boldness. Hey, Appier, how are you doing? Turkish hairdresser not watching the stream. I mean, Gandolius, I, number one, I'm not sure he's Turkish. 
Um, he's definitely Middle Eastern, maybe Turkish. Um, but also, I mean, he's the one who's going to have to fix this. And I think most hairdressers can tell whether or not you have treated your hair well, but they, they're not going to comment on it. I mean, if you go to a fancy hairdresser, they will comment on it and they will say, stop doing this shit, this S. Um, and if you go to some cheap guy, he will just be like, okay, I will fix as best as I can. The, this man clearly doesn't care too much about his hair, uh, which is why he's coming to me because I'm the cheapest guy around. Uh, but I still provide quality and I provide fixing these outrageous people who just cut their hair themselves and then need me to fix it. Something like that. Hey, Albin. Hey, Ericsson. Hey, Aria. Hey, Chesobur. The mother's side matters? Yeah, I hope so too, fool. On my mom's side, there's quite a bit of hair. Partially because it's mostly women. <laughs> Ah, uh, Mac Burnout, thank you so much for your compliments on the repertoire. I, I, I hope it provides you good openings and then you'll have to do the rest. You'll have to win the game yourself, but I, I hope my repertoire can give you a, a good start to the game. Uh, Z Nation, how are you doing? Have you gotten over the disappointment of realizing that I'm better at, than you at Fortnite? Or maybe you were just making jokes. Maybe you didn't mean it. Oh, no, you have gotten over it. That's good. Um, yeah, the men on my mom's side, I don't really know, fool. The thing is, my mom's dad died when she was little so i've never really seen him i don't really know too much about the men on that side that is uh that is quite old school c nation but i mean Books in itself is also old school, so it makes sense going for the old school authors. You started winning games against the uh, Pirch area? That's good. My, my recommendations against that opening is not really the most aggressive, <laughs> but as long as you're winning games, that's good. Okay, so my idea for today is that we could play some chess. I don't know how you all feel about that. But that's what we're doing. Hey, Horus. And we're going to start out with our first challenger, which is Rui. Very clever challenging me before we even start the stream. That's what the smart people do. When I was doing the banter thing, repeatedly I was forgetting to play the hammer repertoire with the white pieces. I was just forgetting the my recommended lines. Um, so, uh, I think it was because I wasn't feeling too well. And I, I think I'm going to be better today simply at remembering stuff. Um, but this variation, I'm not even sure I covered this. No, I did because I covered F5 here, right? Hey, we wims. Yeah, no Fortnite today. Apparently there are people who are not fans of that game. Can you believe it? Such a good game.
Okay, I, I think we're doing fine here. We got some central control. I I really feel like this is pushing it a bit for him. I think I'm in a good enough situation to, to go with the pawn. Although maybe I should have waited. Yeah, I probably should have waited until he committed uh, to castling kingside. Because now he can play h5. But I think it's fine anyway. h5, I go rook e1. And if queen d7, then I, I have a pawn sacrifice with interesting possibilities. Wow, we whims. I like hammer for the chess, which kind of implicitly states that you don't like hammer as a streamer. Feels bad, man. Only chess. Whenever Hammer is having fun with Fortnite, you're not interested. What are you gonna do? Um, okay, so he kind of got my bishop, which is not great. And also, he's ready to get his queen involved. Also not great. Uh, the question is whether or not I can do something here. Um, to which the answer is maybe. We'll give it a go. Um, I think he's going to go like f6 and then try to surrender this pawn. I don't know. I would have preferred if he went queen d7 because then I'm getting my knight to e5 in a good manner. And now it's just messy. Very messy. Oh man, are we gonna lose the first game of the day again? It seems to happen very often. I kind of like that I got the opportunity to um, to take on C6. There's a lot of potential in my pieces right now. Yeah, we need to figure out how to play civilization in fewer than 10 hours perpetual. Okay, so he took the pawn, which means he's planning to escape with his king to this d7 square. Um, and I am seriously considering playing knight e5 just to prevent that move uh, from him. Check. Check. It's very tempting. But it's also very tempting to just take the pawn on a6 and then go knight e5. Both moves look really promising. You know what? I think it's better to take first. Isn't Age of Empires a fast civilization? Yeah, maybe. But as uh, as Vertrich points out, I'm not very good with anything requiring pace. And the fact that it goes faster is also the reason I can't really play it. I'm winning a lot of pawns back here, I feel. I'm basically just taking his entire army. Okay, at this point he's just trying to survive. Not really succeeding after my next move. My next brilliant move. I thought this was gonna be brilliant. 
Probably is. But he does have rook d6. Uh, who cares? Okay, never mind being concerned about losing the first game. Turns out we're going to win it in style with some very nice attacking play. Okay, we're going to have to go back here to protect the knight, but the knight is still coming to this e5 square. And then we can chase away the bishop. And we got the position completely under control. We got it so much under control, I'm soon going to take a break to count the pieces. And I, I think that's going to be a... Uh, a very happy counting. Uh, I think I'm quite a few pieces up. Okay, big question. Knight d7, does he have... Um, does he have a uh, perpetual in that case? I'm pretty sure the answer is no. But not 100%. I was just going to play h3 b3 quickly but i changed my mind i'm just gonna take the rook what kind of reading material have you read lately on chess um nothing really um i haven't read a chess book in too long but if you go to my twitch channel who cares i have a command which uh demonstrates uh or um links to the um, to my recommended uh, books, chess books. Okay, let's get rid of the queens. And then we gotta avoid losing on time, but that should be doable. Hmm, he's a tricky one. He's a very tricky one. Uh, Ulan! Uh, oh, Ulan gifting at the worst moment. Um, I'm actually kind of messing this up. Wow, it's not the best technique I've ever seen. But it's enough to win the game. Um, I, in general, uh, who cares? I'm a fan of Jonathan Rosen and um, um, Mikhail Marin. So if you look up uh, one of those uh, authors, you're going to find some good chess books. Uh, Ulan, gifting a sub both to C Nation and Vertvich. Thank you so much, Ulan. You're ready for the raid, huh, Vertvich? Well, we'll play some chess first. Mihail. Did I say Mika? I, I never really... Because it's basically the same name. So I never really understood the difference in pronunciation between those versions of Mikhail. A uh, random name. I'm doing commentary on World Rapid and Blitz for VG. Um, but based on the information I'm getting right now, uh, we're not going to have the rights to the TV footage. So we're actually basically just doing a Twitch stream. 
uh, with a 2D board and praying that the board keeps up with uh, the pace uh, of the players making the moves. It's, it's going to be a bit weird, but at the same time, it's better than not doing coverage. So, I don't know. Hey, Bomb DC, how are you? I'm much better than the last time. I, 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 was, uh, I, I was struggling with, um, with my voice cracking and, some, uh, and a cold. So, I'm, I'm, I got better during the past week. Hey, CJ, how are you? Yeah, you were a bit, um, yeah, something yesterday. But I'm glad you're back. Mihail. Mihail. But it's like Mihail Mahin, no? I'm not sure splitting it up really worked out for me. Hammer has to get on the NRK. No, I'm, I'm doing good as is, Flo. Uh, Ulan also gifting a sub to Wee Wims. Thank you so much, Ulan. Okay, we're moving on. We're moving on to the next game. This was a great start to the day. Uh, an exchange sacrifice. Um, being rewarded with some good night placements. Uh, coming up next is Amadeus from Slovakia. Haha, <laughs> no worries, surfing. You only missed like the best game I played in a long time. Uh, I don't really know random name. Ratings don't really convert very well across sites. Hey, Abdu, how are you doing? Ooh, Ulan, is that the point of the holiday th stuff that you're supposed to be able to build your own snowman eventually? I actually, this bishop e2 move is very uncommon, but at the European uh, Club's Cup, uh, there was a German kid, I think he was German, who played this bishop e2 move against me. So Amadeus is, uh, is going to feel, he's going to get into some trouble right now on account of me actually knowing this variation. You, you're making Pinochet, CJ? I went to the store today and I bought some um, some kind of ready-made uh, stopper. So I'm looking forward to testing that out. Normally, I try to make it myself, but it often ends up um, being quite a bit of trouble uh, in terms of, you know, Getting everything ready. Uh, this guy is not being very aggressive. I feel like with my bishop pair, I should have good chances. I just, it's difficult figuring out where I want to place this bishop, which is an issue I also had in my the game I referenced. Um, you know what? I think, no. Because he can get his queen to f4, which is a really good placement for the queen. Okay, I'm going to go here and then go d5 and bishop e6. Uh, Magnus is fourth on fantasy. Yes, I did see. Did you know, random name, that I had a better round than him this week? So I'm, I'm making a recovery from uh, a pretty horrible start. Uh, I, I gained 350,000 spots. If it's from Bama, it's super good. Oh yeah, I, it, I think that's the one CJ. But I also tested their um, sweet potato uh, mash. I didn't even really know that was a thing, sweet potato mash, and it was absolutely horrible. It's the worst thing ever. 
So that made me kind of... I, I wasn't 100%. I'd made a good good buy. What's your favorite food? Uh, Kolutstappe is up there, Horus. I don't even know what it's called in English, but it's kind of a Norwegian specialty. Um, and it's it's so good. Um, other than that, I'm pretty basic, which means we shouldn't talk about it. We can we can only discuss things where I have something interesting going on. If I'm just boring and or lazy, I suppose, then we're not going to discuss it. Okay, Old King agrees that Koliotstapa is the good stuff. Okay, we're in an endgame with a bishop pair. Automatic win. Let's see some uh, bishop emotes in chat. Hammer likes steaks. Well done. I'm surprised you know that, Bomb DC. I'm surprised I would be willing to share that information. Yes, I have been mocked and ridiculed by waiters and the world chess champion on how I like my meat cooked. Okay, what's going on? This guy is trying to secure d4 for the knight. And we're gonna say no. Bomb DC also getting a gift sub from Ulan. Thank you so much, Ulan. Okay, let's see. Now the bishops are showing their strength. The bishop pointing down towards white's king. We need we need a second flank of attack though. I, I know I'm not alone, Gondolias. Well done is the way to do it, if you ask me. But there are those there are food professionals who frown upon well done. They say it just ruins the meal. That it defeats the entire purpose of food. That was a mistake. I'm going to take back with the bishop. And we're going to see the power of the bishops. No bishop pair emotes in chat just yet. But get them ready, people. Because these bishops are about to checkmate White's king. They say in an endgame, you got to get your king into the center. Well, that did not pay off for Amadeus, who resigns on account of king d3, bishop f5, knight e4, and checkmate on the middle of the board. No queens. Well done steaks tastes fine, CJ. They taste just fine. Well, they are overcooked steaks, but when it comes to steaks, I don't mind it being overcooked. Vegetables, on the other hand, that's a completely different story. Uh, do you win more money by commentating on World Rapid or, and Blitz or by playing in it? Random name, if I were to make more money playing in the World Rapid and Blitz than doing commentary, I would have to do freakishly well. I would have to massively overperform. I would have to play better than I have ever played in my life before. So in, in general, I make more money doing commentary, but also it's less risk because when you're playing chess, you don't know how much money you're going to make. In fact, you might lose money because playing the tournament costs money. And uh, kind of your income is very dependent on the level of your play, 
Whereas if I do shitty commentary, I still make the same amount as if I, uh, if I was a commentary genius. I'm sorry for not being a food snob, CJ. But yeah, you're welcome to, to fight me on it. Well done, steaks are grayish and taste nothing. That is some people's opinion, yes. Okay, let's go to the next one. Next up is Ericsson. And after that, it's Chess Ober. Ober. However, you pronounce it. Yeah, top 10 in World Rapid and Blitz is really tough. Random name. Okay, G3, that's pretty early. Normally, you don't go G3 this early because it gives black some extra options to get the bishop into play. <laughs> Thank you, Horace. Uh, on the other hand, I had a teammate of mine play this opening, and then he just put the queen out here on the edge and claimed to have an advantage. He also taught me that after c5, you should go queen a6. So this is what we're going to do. We're following the recommendations of Thomas Banosch. I regret following the recommendations of Thomas. Am I just dead right now? That is a very freaky move. But at the same time, I'm not sure what I can do to stop the threat of E4. This is, this is highly problematic. We're going to do here and hope for the best. Is whale meat vegan? Uh, no. Whale is an animal, sir. B5, why not? Yeah, I'm going to have to play B5. But I wanted him to go E3 first to create some weaknesses so that this bishop is threatening the knight. Albin asks, do you think there's a recent resurgence in chess popularity? Um, or is it about the same? I don't think there's been a resurgence. But, I mean, I live in Norway, so kind of my view on these things can be a bit jaded. Uh, since we've had just the most amazing um, opportunities for chess in the last um, six years. Okay, I, I have gotten tricked in the opening. I don't know if I would call it tricked or outplayed. I'm gonna go with tricked. Um, and then we'll just try to recover from this. So now if he goes a4, I go b4, and we just shut it down. <laughs> Thank you, Macbur, now. We might be doing more of those, but we're kind of, we're pausing to do uh, an evaluation of how it's going so far. And honestly, whether or not it's helping. Um, I've been watching her streams lately and yeah it's very difficult to know when you're 
improving your chess. But judging from her streams, it doesn't really Yeah, she's been she's been she calls it chest out. She's I think she's a bit she's been doing too too much chess. But it's gonna be interesting to see her in um in the in the Vegas tournament. That's gonna be I think a better indicator of whether or not she's making progress. Uh, I am very low on time. I am extremely low on time. Hey Shay, uh, we are gonna have to pre-move this guy. That's not a good pre-move because I can do this instead and then this and it's checkmate. What do you know? Yeah, too much chess. It happens. I know the feeling. Okay, we get the checkmate against Ericsson. He tried being very sneaky. I was way down on time. I didn't even realize it myself. But it was good to cancel. I had Rook takes Rook as a pre-move, but I canceled it because I made the realization that he's struggling to get the king away from the danger zone. And after the trade, if I take back with the rook, at least he manages to get his king out. Although even here, he's losing the rook. But instead, the check, the check, and it turns out it's just checkmate. Mr. Dodgy coming in with the Twitch Prime. Thank you so much for the two month resub. Nice recovery. You had a worse position. Yeah, in the opening, I got tricked. Uh, Kiabu asks, why is chess rarely, if never, played outside? Do you think it would give another layer to the game? Um, yeah, no, I think playing outside is very interesting. Uh, I've done so myself a couple of times. Some of the Norwegian summer tournaments, um, like a one-day rapid tournament in Drammen, used to be held at the at kind of the the town square um and it's really nice except for those times it was raining like crazy and then it's not so nice uh and you never really know beforehand whether or not it's gonna rain but in general i agree with you um playing chess outside in nice weather is pretty pretty sweet Uh, Kasa coming back for the five month resub. Thank you so much. Uh, didn't they play some event in a fishbowl outside? Yes, Riataman. Very good. In Bilbao, they played in these kind of glass uh, boxes. So there were like glass boxes placed in a town square or something in Bilbao. And that also was pretty, pretty good. In general, at the time, they thought that these boxes would be the future of chess, in which um, audience members, uh, the people watching, could see into the box. And the idea was that the, um, the players themselves could not look outside, that it would be like one-way glass. Um, and also... Uh, it was placed outside, right? And it was supposed to be soundproof so that you couldn't hear anything nearby. If outside is so good, why has mankind spent thousands of years trying to perfect inside? I don't know, Perpetual. I think you will notice that Perfecting indoors has been mostly the priorities of places where the winter is not so kind. Predictions about a candidate's winner? Yeah, I still think Karana is a bit stronger than Ding. 
we'll we'll see what happens. Eight guys, fourteen rounds. It's always going to be close. Anything could happen. Next up, Chess Ober. Hey, Purinas. Wang Hao is your favorite? It would be pretty cool, random name, if Magnus got a match against Wang Hao. Partly because Wang Hao would be a huge underdog and Norwegians love it when Magnus wins. Uh, but also because I have a I have a plus score against how I beat him at, during the Norway chess tournament in um, 2013. Karana has been distracted by fame. Ding will do great. Okay, you heard it here first. CJ with the analysis. Yeah, but at the same time, Hiata man, those tournaments were the pet project of Danilov, and I don't really miss the fact that we don't really hear much about him these days. So I, I agree, I miss the tournaments, but not so much the man organizing some of it. Okay, we're just going to play with the isolated pawn in the middle. We might let him take control over this d4 square, but we're going to go aggressive in response. We're, we're going to put our knight on e4, see what happens. What do you think of Magnus losing to MBL? Yeah, it was surprising in my opinion, Horus. Um, but MVL did a great job. He he played a really nice match. And I don't think Magnus played his best chess, but what are you going to do? It's part of the game. You always got to be your best and Magnus was not. Um what are we going to capture here? I think first this one, then this one. Uh, chess weeb. Hey, how are you doing? Okay, we're getting uh, into the game with our bishop, which connects our rooks. Um, and at the same time, attacking the black and the white rook, which is now going to enable us to ask for this trade uh, with a tempo. Why did you select such a blurry picture for your Chess24 profile? It, it, it's not a blurry picture. Because it's minimized and then, you know, maximized. I don't know how you call it. It just becomes blurry, I think. He did not see this move. Look at me using the D1 square unexpectedly. Yes, Chess Weeb, the bishop pair is in action once again. A recurring theme of the stream. Um, so, I mean, you would think that having the knight in the corner was a bad thing. But I don't think I can punish it immediately. We're just going to focus on getting our pieces into play. I don't know, random name. I, I think it was a good, I think the concept was good. I like, I like the semi-final and the final. Um, I don't think we have enough knockouts in chess in general. So I, I kind of like the format. Did I blunder bishop e5? I did, didn't I? Mm, so I was planning to go rook d1, but also rook g8 looks pretty good. 
these two pawns together are going to win this game for me. Uh, let's keep on marching towards the goal. They see me rolling. I guess we just do this and then this. And then we take everything we're given. So many more pieces than the opponent. He's hoping for the stalemate, but there is none. Vertwich, you raised your rating 400 points. Well done. Evening, Hanker. How are you doing? Everyone talks about Kasparov, but was Karpov almost as good as Kasparov? I don't really know. I don't think so. Not at, not at the peak. But actually, that's interesting. How old was Karpov when Kasparov defeated him? Because my impression is Karpov was close to his, his peak when he was defeated. And in that case, we can definitely conclude that Kasparov was better because Kasparov was just, you know, Kasparov became world champion before, like, one thing is becoming world champion, but then he went on to dominate the chess stage for 20 years. So I would say Kasparov was not really even close to his peak when he first got the world championship title. Yeah, I mean, yeah, so Kasparov defeated Karpov when Karpov was 34, says random name. And I feel like at 34, you're pretty close to your peak. Um, so I, I feel like uh, Kasparov definitely um, the better player, partly because we can make a fair comparison. Uh, Aquila! Hammer lost a single game. Does that mean his career is over and he should retire? Um, no, is the answer to that. Thank you so much for the 20 month tier two sub, Aquila. And Astreus coming in with the 22 month resub. Thank you so much. I have not seen that name in chat so often, but 22 month resub, that is a lot of support. Thank you so much. When was your peak? Casa, my peak was well before 34, I'm afraid. There are exceptions. Um. I would, when, when was my peak? I would say, I guess my peak was when I made 2700 and I made 2700 when January, 2017. So my peak was three years ago, 26. I peaked at 26, huh? Kind of depressing, but at the same time, that is my peak in chess, not in life. That's also important to remember. I have not yet peaked in life, just in chess.
When did you realize that was your peak? I mean, Larry, I think it's a realization that has kind of grown on me, but also the fact that I lost 60 rating points like in the two months after I got that rating. It, it wasn't the most complicated of conclusions to make. It was depressing more than anything else. When are you getting married? Hmm, I don't know. Do you know, Mr. PUBG? Can you bring us some wisdom of the future? Okay, so Perpetual is trying to checkmate me, which is kind of rude. Um, it's very rude. I mean, I might be tempted to try and checkmate him back. But yeah, this open H file leaves him a lot of potential for quite scary stuff to happen. And also now he can play queen e3. Okay, I'm gonna make this move, which looks horrible, is horrible, but is probably gonna work out. Oh, I'm losing on time. Oh my gosh. Wow, he went there anyway. I was not expecting that. Okay, he's giving me his queen. That's always nice to get a queen. He's also checking the stream for which pre-moves I'm making. He's a very sneaky guy. But also he's getting checkmated. So what are you gonna do? So close and yet so far. Feels bad, man. Are you being a good friend, CJ? Wow, that's nice of you. I'll take your word for it. Um, GV Nor is asking about the game where Magnus played against Hikaru and Hikaru was completely winning. Uh, yeah, I recall that. I recall that. It was one of like the most winning games ever, according to the computer. Does anyone remember that? Magnus against Hikaru and it was it was pretty pretty brutal there at some point. <laughs> You're gonna marry Ellen, working class hero? <laughs> Good luck on that. She she may want to have, you know, part have a say. You remember random name? No, it was not pre-internet. It was, it, we were doing broadcasts. I think it was in Zurich. I think it was like Zurich 2014. It was one of our first ever chess broadcasts. Or maybe it was like Zurich 2015. Something, something along those lines. Yeah, chess weeb. I think the H4 scotch. It was something weird. And Hikaru was attacking on the king's side and Magnus managed to get him back on the queen's side. Well, if Lady Gaga approves, I approve too, Casa. Sounds like a good plan. Oh, actually, Surich 2014 was correct. My memory is so good. 
Oh my, holy smokes. Turns out, I my memory is amazing. I just don't know it. I feel like a lot of the time I'm, I'm, I'm making guesses that turns out to be correct. That's the way to go. It's a good song, Vertwitch. I watched that movie on the plane to New York. I kind of liked it. I've been preparing against the Trumpovsky opening. I was planning to play like this against Rick, Rickard Rapport. And he's kind of not the person you want to engage in some extremely complicated, probably dubious opening line. But I was going to do it. Because sometimes when you play like the world's uh, elite players, you know, having an opening where you just, you're a pawn up, at least you have something to show for it. You're kind of putting the pressure on them. They're not going to be able to grind you out. They need to actually attack and play with, with risk. But I'm not sure how I develop my pieces here, though. Incredible G4 move against Gelfand. No, it doesn't ring a bell. When Magnus used the Trumpovsky, he did it for our favorite president. Yes, I believe he did. I mean, I think it was even like the day after Trump got elected or something. Then Magnus went ahead and played the Trumpovsky in the world championship. Wicked sense of humor. Am I queen about to get trapped? I really regret playing this move. Oh, I'm not liking my position. Trying to play for my time? No, it never does, Perpetual. It never does. I can be pretty quick when I feel like it. Uh, is there any doping in the world of chess? Uh, maybe Kiabu, but no one has been caught. And I don't know of anyone who uses, you know, drugs to get ahead. But Magnus has been asked about this a few times and he was saying some stuff like that he he kind of he was aware that there were certain drugs that might be able to enhance your performance so i i was slightly concerned about the amount of of uh, of knowledge he had on the subject um i'm getting destroyed unfortunately uh, what are you going to do? Completely destroyed. We'll try to beat him on time. Our go-to method. I don't see my king surviving this. Yeah, Horus. That was uh, that was a really good opening idea I had. It was actually it was revealed to me after the fact that this was an idea 
that uh, Team Anand had prepared for the uh, for the World Championship match against Kramnik. Just getting destroyed. I'm not sure I'm gonna win on time. Oof, rook b7. Just one move after another, huh? Yeah, that's gonna seal the deal. Ugh. My king never got to safety. Okay, good game area. That was um I I should not be I, it it appears moving your queen three times in the opening <laughs> to capture one pawn sometimes lands you in trouble. Who would have thought? Who would have thought that that could be a problem? Okay, next up is Battery Bob. Uh, do you think Norwegians pay too much taxes or is Norway a paradise? Tell us the truth. Um, I think Norwegians do not pay too much taxes. Um, because when I see what happens in societies that has you know less of a focus on solidarity um it, it's it's not great i think is my feeling on that um so yeah, I I feel like I pay quite a bit in taxes. I think my tax percentage is going to be like it's going to be like high 30s, maybe even uh in the 40s. Um but at least I never have to kind of be concerned about healthcare and and stuff like that. Okay, we're just going to develop, I think. Um, so yeah, I, I think it's fine. I'm kind of, I'm kind of right, right wing in Norwegian politics. Um, but the funny thing about Norway is that what is right wing or like center right in Norway would be left in 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 the US like Clinton for instance and probably Biden as well people like that would be their policies would be considered more to the right in Norway they would never be kind of thought of as as being um, on the left wing, on, on that side of the specter. Rich people are always right wing. That is not true. That is absolutely not true, working class hero. In fact, very often it's people who's aspiring to become rich at some point in the future. But there's also a difference between new money and old money. New money, I feel like, is very often um, to the right in politics. Whereas old money is, is 
I, I feel like they have a better appreciation of having a society that works as a whole. Old money doesn't get taxed. I suppose perpetual. I suppose. There's some discussions in Norway whether or not we need to um, to get back the uh, inheritance tax. And I've personally, I've kind of been, I've thought that, that it, I've thought that feels a bit unfair because it is double taxation. But at the same time, you know, there are some good points in how, um, in how wealth, I'm getting crushed. What's going on? I'm trying to like have uh, a conversation on complicated topics. And what's happening is just that I'm getting squeezed, even though he didn't really play that aggressive of an opening. But now I'm just here and I'm getting just pushed down the board. I think I'm going to have to go back in order to put this pawn on f5. hundred dollars per day in Norway to live okay yeah maybe random name maybe but I think when it comes to taxes in the world income tax is is not really the problem it's neither here nor there what needs to be fixed is the tax loopholes enabling companies like Google and and stuff like that to pay no taxes at all. That's the problem. Individual taxes don't really matter neither here nor there. <laughs> Sly nice guy, thank you for the 100 bits. Me being squeezed as a bonus? Well, I intend to strike back. I am done being squeezed. Now, instead, probably I'm just getting killed by some attack, but at least I'm not getting squeezed. Yeah, see nation, yeah, I agree. So to my mind, the biggest problem in the world when it relates to taxes is the big corporations and how we're letting them get away with, with not paying taxes. Because as individuals, it just doesn't matter compared to like the... the the extreme i mean these are some huge companies and when they're not even paying a tiny amount that makes such a big difference compared to like some person paying an extra percent all this time you heard texas instead of taxes <laughs> wow well, I think at least we cleared it up in time for you to get the gist of it, Area. I'm getting crushed. I'm, I'm getting squeezed both here and there. I don't have any places for my pieces. That's the problem. I, I don't have good squares for anything. And if I move this pawn, then he will play knight f5 and I will get crushed. Still get crushed, just in a different way.
Yeah, Jan is a beast. Random name. He really got the hang of these playing against the viewer kind of things. Okay, I'm just letting him. I was now hoping that I could be okay because his bishop is kind of bad. But at the same time, all my pieces are bad. So it's not really that helpful. Okay, that's a big, that's a big deal for me. Getting that pawn, that's huge. Because now I also get the f5 square. I only have 20 seconds left, but getting that pawn might turn it around. Shouldn't have pre-moved. Okay, maybe the pre-move is gonna let me win on time, but I didn't really need to win on time there. I had kind of saved my position already. Okay, we get the win on time. I hear that's how Jan does it. And if it's good enough for Jan, it's good enough for me. Yeah, that's my point, Wizard. It's the the tax loopholes for corporations have become so big that we're kind of having <laughs> we we could have tax reductions for individuals if only the corporations were paying, you know, just just ten percent. I mean not even the the stipulated 20%. If they just paid like their fair share in the country where, because that's also part of the problem, right? That they're taking the money out of one country and then uh, kind of taxing it in a different country to which to the one where they actually made the money. So like, I, I I have heard, I don't really know how it works, but it is my understanding that a lot of money goes to Ireland. So like money Google is making in Norway is not being um, taxed in Norway, it's being taxed in Ireland. And for some by a strange coincidence, the taxes in Ireland are not very high, if even existing. So the kind of that the fact that the world has gotten more international is part of the problem. Hey, David, how are you doing? Banter match with Jan. He did those in the past. Yeah, maybe sometime, but I'm starting to think that Jan is actually better than me. That's a thought that didn't really cross my mind up until very recently. And now that it's lingering in my head, I kind of want to avoid situations where he can prove his superiority. Mm, are we going to take this? Okay, we're trying to reinforce our center. If I'm successful in getting my pieces out and having this knight with the protection of the pawns, then we're in a we're in a very good spot. If, however, my opponent manages to take down my kind of put enough pressure on the center immediately, then I, I could be in trouble. 
Hian knows every opening. Well, Tan Khan, I can just choose to play the same opening over and over, and then his knowledge will be irrelevant. That that's not what scares me about Yan. It's just the fact that people seem to think he just keeps winning and winning and winning. No one can explain it, but the results speak for themselves. I guess we're going here. I don't really like it, but I don't see it a choice. Do you have a better rating than Jan? No, Horus. I'm even behind Jan on ratings. Uh, the depression is real. Uh, why does Jan have a 1E4, E5 repertoire on Chessable, uh, but your repertoire isn't there? It's because Pizza Racer, my repertoire was created for Chess24. And if they're going to do um, kind of, if they're going to make it into a Chessable course, then that requires ex extra work, which uh, has not been done. So... Um, it could become a thing, sorry, it could become a thing in the future, but not for now. Uh, I don't think chat is a lagging soap, but m most of the chat comments are on and Twitch chat. Hey, Halvard, how are you? Jan only plays two tournaments a year. That is actually true. Perpetual. It's a top strategy for not losing a lot of rating. I'm getting outplayed. This F5 move has not really stood the test of time. I don't really like my position. Is there any piece I like? Let's try to get rid of this bishop. It's a good start. F5 is the best. Not in this game, Pizza Racer. You show this game to Roland and you say, why are you recommending weakening the position? Okay, I might get a queen trade. I'm quite happy with that. But he might also avoid it. Maybe I should take him back with a knight. Okay. We got... A better placed bishop, we got our pieces into play. Compared to like just three moves ago, this is an amazing position. Uh, maybe I should have gone f4 there. We have our rooks, our rook in the center. Finally, the, the pawn on f5 might be good if it lets us get the king into the action quicker. Hey, Nicola, how are you doing? Dubious at best. Yeah, that feels more accurate. Perpetual. Um, I guess we're just going to move this stuff. I was hoping he was going to do that. Because maybe now we can take this one and we get an end game with knight against bishop. Of course, the bishop is normally the better piece. But because he gets a broken pawn structure and because I'm going to get my king into the action quicker than him, I think this may be an exception. Look at that king go. Look at that king go. There's nothing stopping that king, is it? We get the king up the board and we're going to win the game, I'm pretty sure. Okay, that was p potentially a really bad move. Uh, 
I should have gone knight here first. Now the question is, do we go, how far up do we go with the pawns? Yeah, we'll do this. Um, this is also tempting. We're just going to try to take all of his guys. It's a pretty straightforward strategy. Take all of his guys and hope that we manage to get back into defense quickly enough. I haven't calculated this. It's kind of impossible to calculate something like this, but I'm, I have a feeling we're close. To making it work. We're going to go back into defense momentarily. Then we're just going to make sure we get rid of the scary guys, the past pawns. And then these guys on the other side are going to take care of business. Uh, who won the finals qualifier, Halvard? Okay, so F5 worked out in the end, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure it was a good move. I, I think I was lucky. I got the right exchanges done. Um, but actually to end our tax conversation, I do want to mention that in Norway, we have the value added tax, which is actually really, really clever because it forces kind of items and, and uh, services being uh, bought and sold within Norway. Um, they get an extra tax. And as long as the companies are so good at loopholes and managing to avoid paying taxes on their uh, profits, it's very important that you manage to tax revenue, uh, their revenue somehow. So I, I think the way companies are avoiding um, profit taxes these last couple of years uh, the value added tax is, is really important. And I know Norway has it. I don't think the US has it. The US has some state taxes, but it's, it's, it's similar but different and it doesn't go like nationwide. Mm, Germany has value added tax. I think England has some, but not a lot. And, and I think in general, if your country doesn't have the value added tax, it's probably a bad thing uh, because it means it's easier for the big corporations to get away with not having their, their paying their fair share. Sales tax, but no value added tax. Yeah. So the US doesn't have the value added tax probably maybe should oh yeah so this guy voleur is not here so we're moving on uh unfortunately um i'm only playing premium members kiabu so i'm gonna have to decline your challenge and sark is uh is next up
Um, Romania has 19% value added tax. I feel like 19% is, is quite high. In Norway, it's 25. Uh, but I feel like a lot of countries that has value added tax has like just 10%. Oh, it's 20% in the UK. Never mind then. That's a solid rate. Fresh Lizard says we should eliminate income tax and just do value added tax. Then the rich pay more because they buy more. Um, I don't know if it works in, 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 in real life, but on principle, I agree with you that there are some... Um, some pretty good, good reasons to go after a tax system where which is uh, based on um, on revenue and and how much you buy. Yeah, I know, Halvard. I haven't done a good job of updating the Mubot commands. The final buyer pays the value added tax. The value added tax. It deducts for company. That's only partially true, perpetual. Because someone always pays the value added tax. And the way Twitch does it, so I have to pay for my Twitch subscriptions and for the other Norwegians in chat, we actually pay 625. But the, that's very, very kind of, it's very strange in my opinion, because normally you would never give the consumer the full cost of the value added tax. Because the, the basic economic principles say that if, if you raise the price of something, uh, you, you're not automatically going to make more money because it's also going to lower demand. And because Twitch is giving the consumer the full, um, the full cost of the value added tax, it also means that European Twitch consumers are less likely to buy subscriptions because of the extra cost. Um, And what was the point I was going to make? I, I, I had planned some point, but I forget. You study economics? Yeah, Tonkan. For a year until I realized the math is too tough. But also, I'm, I'm my entire, my both my parents are economists. So growing up, this kind of thing was the dinner table conversation. On the other hand, my sister, I, I went to go to school to do economics because I just thought it was the logical thing to do. And my sister, on the other hand, she was like, I'm never doing economics. I have had too much of that in my life already. <laughs> so yeah, there's a difference. I thought it was just the logical way to proceed, whereas she thought that's the one thing I'm not doing. It's very tempting to capture this one at some point. It's tempting to capture this one. You don't know anything more stupid than math? Well, that is, that is just plain wrong. Mathematics is very useful. It's just that I don't think the Norwegian school system did a good enough job preparing me. Because I, I was a math genius when I was 10. And then they didn't give me any tougher math puzzles until I was 16. There was like a six year period where I could have learned a lot of stuff. In which instead of learning new stuff, I was just speed racing with my friends doing some plus and minus and stuff like that. 
I really feel like I, I was not a hard worker in university that I'm, 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 I'm going to be the first to admit, but I could have been better prepared. Your dinner table must be great. <laughs> I'm not sure that a uh, 12 year old kid appreciates it. Um, normally, Tan Khan, but I thought it was pretty good. I thought we were having some interesting discussions. Magnus didn't do high school at all. He did, Mario. He was even in my class. We went to the same high school, the, the school for the top athletes. And to get Neuges top of this gymnasium. And we, uh, we both did the chess program. I'm, I'm getting outplayed. And I'm not, I don't fully understand what I did wrong. But I did something wrong because I am worse. Saddest part of the Magnus documentary was the high school mocking bit. No, Casa, that wasn't high school. I mean, I, I guess I haven't actually seen the documentary, but I'm almost certain that was uh, elementary school. My experience uh, going to the athlete high school was that I got way more respect than I did in middle school and and um, and and high and, and elementary school. And my theory for it is that the other guys, they were also kind of they were competitors, right? They were used to acknowledging being good at something, uh, and so they respected someone getting results regardless really of the activity so uh, i had um i would say uh high school was was pretty good to me uh in that regard because people knew that magnus and i were special magnus a bit more special than me but still Okay, where are we going to put this bishop? Are we going to capture this one? That's pretty... It's pretty crazy. But honestly, it might be an option. You know what? We're going to do a fisher. See what happens. You were his friend from childhood? Well, I mean, the chess community is not that big, Gorov. So, you know, you're bound to know all the chess players in your age group. And also we lived quite close. Both Magnus and I uh, didn't have to... Um, a lot of people actually moved away from home in order to go to the chess school. But both Magnus and I could uh, ride our bicycles to school. I was like three kilometers in one direction and he was like three kilometers in the other direction. I blundered rook b1. Uh, but rook b1, maybe I have queen c4. Uh, this is becoming slightly tricky. Let's do this. Hammer bullied the whole class with marketing advice. You know why that's extra funny, Casa? Because we went to like the the high school is is in a pretty wealthy neighborhood, so most of my classmates were not really very good at school, but they went on to do some kind of marketing degree and do very well for themselves in the life. Uh, let's see how far this guy can go. That's 
far enough, I would say. Ding pretty much proved it's not wise to ride bikes in Norway. I mean, or you could look at it this way, Perpetual, that maybe because of the air quality in China, they're not that, or, you know, and the amount of cars and stuff like that, maybe they're not used to riding their bicycles in China. Maybe that's the problem. Maybe it's not the Norwegian bikes. I'm just going to put it out there, you know, could be, maybe. Okay, next up is Javier Gonzalez. Now, I was riding my bike to high school, three kilometers. It was actually a pretty good way of... Um, of both getting to school because there wasn't really a good bus line I could take. Uh, but also it was it was good for staying slightly fit. Probably high school was the period of time where I was the most fit. Or during the summer at least when I was uh, biking. During winter not so much. Is traffic in Norway great? Um, oh, I I did something wrong. I have been missing out on Chess24 chat. Apparently it stopped uh, auto scrolling. Um, final buyer only for digital products. Um, yes, but it's kind of... It's, it's kind of a problem for the company as well, Perpetual, because, because they have to charge that extra, right? Uh, so they sell less than they would have. It's a disruption of their... Yeah, I mean... You can say that it's the final buyer, but it's still kind of cuts into the company's profits because it means that they cannot optimize how they normally would. How long is the winter in Norway, Georg? It's too long. It's way too long. Oh my god, you should just go. There's this website, I think it's like timeanddate.com, but never mind that. Just Google uh, daylight hours also. And the amount of hours we have daylight is going to blow your mind. It's not very good. You biked 13 kilometers to your school cup? That's pretty good for two weeks. Good for you. I mean, it's bad for you in terms of you probably had to get up at 6 a.m. But actually biking 13 kilometers, I think that's doable. I think the main problem is kind of if you have to get up very, very early in the morning. But in terms of, as a method of transportation, I quite like biking. It's getting dark at 2.30, Pizza Racer. Wow, you're quite n far north in Sweden, huh? Yeah, it's, it's rough. Okay, I, I think we're giving up on Javier. He's not here. Next up is Zoop. Et G met ein Wolk, which probably translates, I eat soup while I'm at work. Best guess. 
while you're actually in Stockholm pizza and it gets dark at 2.30? I think even Oslo has sunlight until like 3 p.m. You must have a high level of depression with that little sunlight. Yeah. Honestly, that's the thing. Nice guy. Uh, not even kidding. Yeah, a lot. If you go to northern Norway, you're you're not having any sunlight. Feels bad. Um, can you see the Northern Lights where you live? Um, no, I cannot, Kiabu. Not to my knowledge, anyway. I've seen the Northern Lights once, and that was uh, when I was playing a tournament in Iceland. In northern Norway, there's no light. Yeah, that's a good point. So part of the problem in Oslo right now is that there's no snow, uh, which in turn means that there, the normally the snow would reflect some some sunlight and make it feel lighter. So the worst time of the year is when it's November, December and no snow. That's that's the worst. I think we're going to put our knight here. Because he's going to have to put his queen on the E file and that's where we have our rook. And maybe we can do some, give him some trouble. But Olesund is not really that far south, is it? Ulan. Okay, I'm actually going to take this guy. I'm both capturing a pawn, threatening another pawn, and opening up for the rook towards the queen. I don't care that I'm opening up against my king. I think a pawn is more valuable. We're just going to keep going, I think. Did he trick me? No, I tricked him. And when we do the counting, we see that I have two pawns and a queen in exchange for a um, rook and a, a knight which is very much in my favor. And that's also going to help. Who's going to win this year, Johannes or Martin? Um, I'm, I'm honestly, Kiabu, I'm not really following cross-country cross skiing much anymore. I think there's so much stuff I used to know really, really well, where I have no idea anymore. And primarily it's Norwegian politics and, uh, and winter sports. And the reason I have no idea anymore is because I don't have a TV. I never watch TV anymore. And those are the two areas most affected by that change in my life. Uh, yeah, thanks for the game, Soup. Was I correct about the translation? Can you tell us the translation of your username? I think I said, I eat soup at work or something. I 
I think if anything, Ulan, that just demonstrates not so much that Olison is far south, more so that Tromsø is ridiculously far north. Because Olison is way further north than Oslo. Aquila, you wasting your hammers? Shame on you. There were there was a rumor that the the channel points might be reset. Uh, the fourteenth of uh, December or something. I don't know if that's true. Ah, soup you eat with a fork. Ah, uh, I should have known. Because in the Netherlands and in Germany, when you start a word with a V, it's actually an F sound. And instead, I was thinking it was work. Okay, that that's pretty close though. Work equals work. Just an E instead of an O. At least I was close to the right concept. Trolling hammer worth every channel point I've received. Well, as long as you're happy, Aquila. I'm not resetting them, Pizza Racer. If it was up to me, they would not be reset. But apparently Twitch, as they're launching it to all channels, they they said they might be resetting. What are you going to do? I actually, I kind of popularized this opening with white. I started playing this concept, even not just in bullet games, but in uh, normal time control games. I had a, I had a good position in the opening against Navara, amongst other successes. Okay, we're going to change the pawn structure to make it a bit more interesting. And we're going to play this pretty much like a Grunfeld. Very similar to the Grunfeld. Uh, you're a summer kind of guy. Honestly, Casa, I've always considered myself a winter guy. Um... Because I think the cold is so much easier to deal with than the warmth. So, like, when it's cold outside, you can just wear a better jacket. Whereas when it's warm, you know, you're just miserable. Um, but as I've gotten older, I have gained an appreciation for warmer weather. Uh, I don't know how it happened. But I think also the fact that walking around in the winter when it's like slushy it's so miserable so th that's no fun cj are you kidding should you be going to the emergency room how how did you break your arm Do you cr cross country ski? Yeah. Uh, not as often as I should, but I, I quite enjoy it. My problem is I don't really have too many people to go cross country skiing with. Because um, it's difficult finding someone that holds your level. 
So you, whenever you want someone to go skiing with, you want someone who's who walks, uh, who skis at about the same pace as you. So, and also there's like different families have different traditions of of skiing. So I've I've gone skiing. The person I've been skiing with the most, by far, other than my family, is Magnus, because Magnus's family is um, is quite eager skiers, um, and the other guys we went to high school with, they they they're not so much. They don't have the same tradition for skiing in their families. Um, so going skiing with Magnus is, is, is really good, but he, the thing is that I'm more of a classical, uh, technique kind of guy, whereas he will do the, um, freestyle, the, what do you call it in English? Shating. He has more muscles basically. Um, and so that kind of helps him go quite fast and I sometimes struggle to keep up. Skate. I'm not sure that's it. No, I guess that. I don't think that's it. I'd love to go skiing with Magnus. Where do I book that? Do you even know how to ski, Aquila? You're from the US. In Norway, we kind of just assume that all Americans cannot ski. Hell, I learned the other day that Botez is, Scan is Canadian and is not a good skater. That was a bit of a disappointment. Oh, you actually do say skate skiing? So I nice guy? Wow. Okay, I guess I learned something new then. It just didn't sound right. You had a Norwegian flight, Aquila. You figured out how cheap it is to go to Norway. You might as well learn how to ski if you're going to go visit us very often now. Okay, I think we're just going to take this pawn in the center and hope that a pawn up is good. But he does have rook c1 and c6, which is unfortunate. Okay, he didn't do that. So the reason I was concerned about that is because this extra pawn is not actually worth that much in itself. So it's very valuable for me in this position. Um, to get rid of that pawn because it wasn't really doing a good job anyway. I, I, I'm having some something in my eye. Um, I can go into a pawn endgame now with rook, uh, rook d5. Rook d5 takes, 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 takes. And I get to e7 in time. That should be winning. Uh, takes, 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 takes. I still get to e7. Should be winning. This should be fine. I'm getting the pawn so far up the board.
I should have played B6, but it doesn't matter. This is winning regardless. Skiing on snow is just cold skiing. Well, there's different techniques, Aquila, and one technique goes a lot faster than another. Hammer without glasses is just wrong. I completely agree, Casa. It's freaky. Because, I mean, I got my glasses when I was 18. So I, at the beginning, I thought hammer with glasses is just weird. But now hammer without glasses is just very strange. It was the same with my dad. Whenever my dad didn't have his glasses on, I just thought it was very strange. Um... What am I doing? This is going to be a stalemate. I have to go fetch pawns. But yeah, it's fine. Okay, and he didn't go grab my pawn, which makes it a bit easier. Looks like a killer on the calves. Calves, yes. You need some muscles, but actually, Aquila, it's not really. It's mostly the arms, and that was kind of my disappointment about skiing. When I discovered that skiing was more about your arm muscles than your leg muscles, that's when I decided that, yeah, skiing is never going to be my strongest strong suit. I have really good muscles in my legs. In my arms, not so much. What's your secret for a good night's sleep before a tournament? Um, I don't really have a secret. In fact, I would say that one of the reasons I, my results have deteriorated the past couple of years is because I have been struggling much more with uh, sleeping. Yeah, thanks for the game, Mittal. Lake Tao sounds pretty nice for Twitch. I've never been, but I feel like a lot of Californians talk about it. It's the bow test streams you stay up for. Actually, honestly, partly true. Yes. Maybe not so much bow test, but also like um, the other guys. Like the Fortnite guys. Because scrims start at, um, at midnight, Norwegian time. And they usually do like two hours. And that's really gotten... And they don't have a break, you know? They just go every day. But Twitch in general has disrupted my sleep because I am not only a content producer on Twitch, I have also become a consumer. I prefer winning Tonkan. So weak players is uh is my uh is my forte. Uh Metal, um where was the mistake? I don't I'm not sure you made like one clear mistake. I I think I managed to get a really nice pawn structure after which you 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 get some trouble. You not you never really recovered from that pawn structure. Um, 
But I that's the thing about, you know, sometimes playing against a good player. You don't really make a big mistake or anything, but you still end up losing the game. Uh, you definitely should have played... When I went E5 middle to win the pawn, you definitely should have gone Rook C1. Rook C1 and C6 to try and trade off that uh, C pawn without me getting a majority on the on the queen side. Uh, Atlanta, I'm doing both 5-minute and 3-minute, and whichever you prefer. What's the next great adventure? I don't know, Aquila. Usually things just fall into my lap. I'm I'm pretty lucky like that. Big adventure. I'm not very adventurous in general. It's, I'll have to work on it. Do you think Shanklin will get back to 2700? I don't know, Horace. It's tricky. It's very, very tricky. I know from experience, once I fell below 2700, I never really recovered. So it really depends on where he manages to stabilize himself. As far as I recall, he, he managed to do a good performance in the European Clubs Cup. So as long as he manages to stabilize, then yeah, I think he can get back. The The problem is just that one defeat increases the likelihood of losing the next one because it's, it's a bummer both for your confidence but also for your mood. And with a lower confidence and with a worse mood, you're also going to be more likely to have a bad results going, going forward. I don't know, Aquila. It's supposed to be there. Maybe you spent all your coins. Huh. He's playing the same thing Rickard Rapport did against me. Rapport, oh, I forgot to switch. Uh, Rapport played e4 here. Um, it was interesting. But knight c3, I don't know. We'll just castle, see what happens. What are we going to do? It's tempting to push. Because this bishop is probably also misplaced. I don't think it's going to do a good job there. Knight on the edge. Should be okay for me. You know what? We're going to do something unusual. We're going to actually try to trap this knight. Go b5. Really, Aquila? Is that the new phrase? It used to be knights on the rim are dim. Are you recoining the phrase? Huh. Knight on the side, I will not abide. I never heard that one. I always thought the US version was, uh, or English version, was knight on the rim is dim. Anyone else in chat heard this uh, knight on the side, I will not abide thing? 
Okay, let's see what happens. My knight is kind of poorly placed. Okay, is he gonna... Yeah, I don't think that's a good move. If I get my knight to c6, I, I would be very happy with my position. But now if I go knight c6, he can capture on e5. And there's a lot of trickery going on. I think I'm going to play rook b8, just get out of this diagonal. I'm hoping to play knight c6 to blockade the pawn on c5 and also control a lot of squares around it. Um, yeah, and now is a moment to do so, right? But it's also very tempting to go here and here. Okay, I think this is the move. So you Google part of your phrase and then you say Google supports you, Aquila. I think you misunderstand the way Google works. There was there was one of the Norwegian youngsters who were who was telling me that oh no Mark Dvoretsky is a grandmaster, and then he said no 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 he, he, he I I said no he's not he's an I am, and, and this kid said to me and he wasn't really a kid he was old enough to, uh, enough to know better, and he said to me no 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 look at look at this I googled Mark Dvoretsky grandmaster GM. And I'll look at all of these hits. And I'm like, oh yeah, I don't see a single flaw with that plan whatsoever. But have you considered Googling Mark Droretsky? I am. And, and see how many hits you get then. And it turns out, can you believe it? You get more hits by Googling Mark Droretsky and his uh, actual title than Googling a title he never had. But the other phrase, Aquila, is knights on the rim are dim. They're never gonna appear in your knight on the side. Google search. Americans, what are we going to do about you? Dim or grim? Honestly, that's a good question. I think it's dim, but grim makes so much more sense. I think it's dim, but I agree that grim makes more sense. Okay, we're completely winning. We have successfully blocked this pawn. And now long term, there's just no way white is going to be able to defend this. I'm going to play a4 and then put my knight on b3. Maybe there's multiple ways to say the same thing. Aquila, back down. The chess community has spoken. Whoever taught you that is not familiar with the normal chess sayings, clearly. No, uh, we're just capturing everything. Good for us.
Um, let's go here. Uh, this looks pretty good. For his contributions to chess, I that, I feel like that sounds a very bad sets a very bad precedent, Ikari. What was it he did that was so so great that he deserves such a title? Okay, I let him put my king on the side because I couldn't see how he checkmates me. So let's hope he doesn't checkmate me because that would be somewhat embarrassing. Okay, taking with the queen was definitely not the best move because now I get my queen back to defense. His queen was hanging on f7. Yeah, that's one way of putting it, Tankan. Okay, we get the win. Syrian goes down. It's a maneuvering battle. Next up is De De Kony Cognitov. De Cognitov. B takes. Magnus took with the D pawn in the world championship matches. This is actually interesting. I saw someone play this line on the internet the other day. Um, and he played the exact same line I recommended in the, in the repertoire. The only problem is... I forget who... Who it was. It was someone really strong. I think it was Eric. The chess bra himself, Eric Hansen, I think played my recommendation in this variation with the white pieces. Unfortunately, he had no idea. But I, at least I got the uh, the opportunity to tell him he should really check it out. And that it would serve him well, considering his current opening choices. I'm streaming tomorrow as well, Aquila. You'll get your chance to continue promoting your incorrect views. Uh, so in this opening, everyone puts their queen on h5. I never really understood why, but frankly, now he's also getting g5 and it, it's starting to make some sense. I think I was, for a moment, I was considering putting the bishop here. But now, after queen h5, I think I'm just going to go e5. Get a queen trade, go into an endgame. Uh, yes, Mario, same time, 7 p.m. Same time all week. 
Uh, actually, uh, not on Thursday. And also, I'm planning... I want to do something special. We got my two-year Twitch partnership celebrations uh, coming up soon-ish. I think it's... Uh, December 19th. I, I looked through my emails and I found a, an old email uh, which kind of started the partnership process. So I, I think we're going to call the anniversary for December 19th. I actually did forget that his queen protected that square. I'm not playing this very well. Hmm. Yeah, that's not good. Yeah, Burns, I'm feeling better. Thank you. Honestly, I was feeling fine the last time as well. It's just that I didn't sound fine. And it, it was a very... It was a very noticeable illness slash problem I was having. I wasn't actually feeling that bad. Okay, so we're going to play around the fact that he has awesome control of the white uh, light squares. Um, and we're just going to play against this bishop, I think. So this bishop isn't really participating in the game. Uh, and we're going to go rook e3 and rook, rook e1. And just build up something. Frankly, I'm not disappointed by that move because it kind of plays into the plan I just mentioned. Um, however, maybe I want to do this. I mean, he so clearly is trying to go bishop f5. So I might as well stop it. Yeah, this game we're showing how to beat the bishop pair, Aquila. That's a consequence of me giving up the bishop pair earlier. So now I might have h4 in some variations, trying to open up against his king. played this yeah Okay, this is a move I really don't want to play. But I, I didn't really see any other options. So there's a pretty big chance he's going to take back with a rook and try to put pressure down the C file. Um... I'm hoping that I'm creating some weaknesses for him here ish and that all my pieces are kind of protected so it's fine. This is what happens when you don't respect the bishop. That is true. 
I agree. And yet, you guys didn't go talking about the bishop pair until I had given it away. I've already had quite a few games today where I was being a genius with the bishops. Those games you just ignored. It makes me feel like you guys have an agenda. Yeah, I thought this would be okay, but it's not. It's not okay. I'm getting killed on the C file. Might even be losing a piece. I don't see how to save the piece. My queen is stuck. I thought that there would be like somehow I could get away from this. But I don't see it. Hey Joseph, how are you doing? Okay, so I think this is my plan. My plan of desperation. I spent too much time. If I hadn't spent all that time, maybe this would have had some counter chances. Also, why did I take this pawn? Because now my queen is just getting trapped. Ooh, that's a good move. Oh, man. I don't know. I don't know. I thought I had a good position, but this e5 move was not good. I forgot that his queen was protecting the square. And the, the final move was very nice. Because if I do something like king h2, he still takes on e1. And if I take the rook, he gives checkmate. And here he takes my queen. It's a nice finish. Yes, I am back. All week. Do you think MVL will make it to the candidates? Horus, I was checking the FIDE Grand Prix system tournament. And I think there's a decent chance he will make it. He, uh, he definitely has everything to play for in Jerusalem. It's going to be an exciting, exciting tournament. Deciding who goes to the candidates. What do you think of the Karakhan? It's an interesting opening, Croy. I've used it myself several times. The Rue Bleu is next up. Yeah, well played. Well played. Crushing win. How old is the next world champion right now? I really don't know, Casa. Because it's that question is honestly not too far away from asking who's going to be the next world champion. Because even if I say the next guy is 12 years old, we have a pretty decent idea who the best 12 year olds are. But also there's, it's more likely that the next world champion is 27 years old, which is a pretty safe thing to say, seeing as how both Karana and Ding um, are, um, are born in 1992. Hey Johnny. 
Uh, Kiabu, no, I'm not playing against um, non-premiums. Sorry. Brubru is offering an exchange of pawns. Accepted. And if he takes back, I'm probably going to close up shop. And maneuver something to the square. Or I'm going to play e5, which is a lot more direct. Nah. I was supposed to get some work done at home today. I It wasn't that much I needed to do. I needed to do some laundry. I needed to clean out my desk. I needed to, uh, you know, small things. And I take out the trash, get the dishwashing done and so on and so forth. I needed to do some accounting. I had one phone meeting, but I thought, you know, today is going to be a good day. I'm going to get a lot of stuff done. And that's not really how life works. And also things take so much more time than you originally think. So I ended up not getting my desk cleaned. I did do the invoicing though. I'm pretty good at that. I always prioritize invoicing stuff because it puts me in a good mood. Um, I think actually this might work. We're going to give it a go. I've been away, Marius. I, I've been out of town, so it kind of it it's it, yeah. Gets to be quite a lot after a while. Um, so yeah, but among the things I haven't gotten done is pretty exciting. So I showed this on um, on the banter uh, banterthon as well. But I have bought a stream deck, which is some kind of thing that's going to help me do some kind of thing. I don't know, but it, it looks as far as I've gotten it explained. It's pretty cool. And Tori has it, so it's probably good. I also got a uh, green screen or rather a claw that is green. So that's going to be good. I'm going to try hanging it up on the wall behind me. Maybe it's going to work. Maybe it's not going to work. I've been told that my lighting is probably not good enough for it to work well, but I guess we're going to find out for ourselves. And um, then the most exciting thing is this one. This is the key light. Oh, I may have shown you my address. but. To be fair, you can also find my address anywhere in Norwegian records. Um, so, uh, so that's exciting. And that's going to, I think it's basically stage lighting, like proper lighting that is going to be behind the web camera and actually be straight in my face, which has the potential of being really annoying, but it also has the potential of, uh, of being pretty good. Good lighting, that's an art form. And it's it's a tricky thing to make happen. Uh, did I just blunder? I did not see that move. Okay, we're gonna fix it by getting our rook involved. What will we have in the background? That's a good question, Chris. It's a very good question. I haven't decided yet. All of that is going to have to be decided after I figure out whether I can make it work. Your green screen is going to need the lighting, but it's definitely going to annoy you as well. Well, the thing is, if I set it up, 
it's going to be my decision whether I turn it on or not. So I feel like just getting it installed is, is part one. And then if I don't like it, then I don't have to use it. And also in general, it's good for my apartment to have more light sources. It was uh, lacking for a while there. Probabilistic machine learning. Wow. I think I once had a talk on machine learning to a room of actual corporate important people. And the thing you got to know is I have no idea about machine learning. So yeah, that was interesting. Honestly, it worked out quite well, in my opinion. He's about to capture my pawn on h4. No, I thought I was trying to entice him to capture that pawn because the queen was going to be trapped if he did. <laughs> LED panel from Ikea? Really, Marius? I feel like I don't spend enough time in Ikea. Probably I should. I need to be a better homemaker. Okay, we're gonna try this. What? Does anyone understand what just happened? He just made two moves in a row that's basically checkmating himself, not me. I was kind of hoping he would take that one. That was my trap. Because then I was going to go bishop a5. But now I'm tempted to go queen h5 instead. Because that looks very checkmate e. Looks, looks a lot like checkmate. Hey, ominous. Oh, I didn't even get the chance to give checkmate. Feels bad. He resigned before I could execute the checkmate. Okay, next up is uh, Beto. Oh, that's cool. You found an article even? That's good. Did I just allow him to go bishop e3? Ah, but at least we have the queens on the board, right? Yeah, go ahead, ominous. Wow, your grandfather was a bodyguard for Bobby Fischer, and then he actually comments on Bobby's behavior afterwards. Isn't it like the, that the number one thing for bodyguards that you do not publicly discuss the people you've protected? I, I don't know about that one. And during the Norway chess tournament, we have a lot of volunteers driving us around. And sometimes in the car, you have personal conversations, right? 
and you just assume that people understand that you know this is not really for public consumption but i feel like a lot of those volunteers can't really be trusted because they just think it's very cool to be there so i'm act i'm actually a bit cautious what i say but there are times you can't really hold it in I remember driving back, we were, one of the, the rounds of Norway chess was held at a monastery outside of Stavanger. And driving back, I had a loss to Grishuk and Magnus had a loss to Anand. And I was just going on. We had the same car together going back. And that was, both of us were not in a very good mood. But luckily we had a very cool driver. So he, he seemed to be uh, someone you could trust. But at the very least, we were discussing pretty intensely our dissatisfaction with the day. I, I think that's the best way to put it. Mm, I kind of want to keep the bishops. Because if I go f5, that pawn is going to be weak. If I go d5, it's also going to be weak. d5 takes takes and then f5. This pawn is kind of isolated behind enemy lines. I think we're going to have to go back. Was that when Magnus timed out? No. Like Ulan says, that getting when he lost on time, that was against Apollo. That was in the first round. This was like the third round. But I think it was the same year. So he hadn't had a very good start to the tournament. To say the least. I don't think this is a good move. I think I'm just going to take it and grab space. Okay, that was definitely not a good move because now I'm just winning the pawn on g2. Actually, I may have been wrong about it being a bad move in general. Had he taken with a pawn, it would have been very difficult for me to activate my king. But now I'm just winning this pawn. One out of three doesn't happen for Magnus frequently. No, it does not. But I think he was at half a point out of three. It was even worse. It was even worse. Okay, let's see. How do we win this? I think this bishop is pretty much trapped. Oh, no. Bishop e1. And if rook g1, he actually has a check down here. That's pretty scary. I almost fell for that. Mm, now there's no check. But maybe I should just grab a pawn. I'm pretty sure he was at half out of three. I'm not sure though. I don't remember who he played in the second round. I'm pretty sure I was ahead of him. So I think I had one point out of three and I think he had half a point, something like that.
And we get the resignation. LeFong is doing a Venture Blitz at 11 p.m. That's in one hour's 20 minutes. But I don't think I'm in the mood to try to continue until he starts. So I think we're just going to end it at the top of the hour. Yeah, Thomas, it was a, it was a good technical win. I, I it helped that he his king was so far out on the side because the the difference in king activity really helped me out there good night Mario I hope I'll see you around tomorrow. Hey, Ivy. How are you doing? Um, you know what? I feel like he has given me the option to go C3, D4. But I'm going to go rookie one first. Because now if knight F6, I can maybe go E5. Are you a better Blitz player than Eric? No, I'm not. Uh, maybe over the board. I don't know why, but I'm much, much stronger over the board than on the internet. But I kind of doubt it. He's so much better than me on the internet that I'm probably not better over the board. Okay, so the big question now, can I play e5? It's too tempting. The knight just doesn't have any squares. He's going to have to give up a pawn. Or he can go back. Um, yeah, I didn't really even consider that. That doesn't really seem like the kind of move you should be allowed to make without getting completely crushed. But on the other hand, I don't actually see what I can do. Hansen or Rosen? Ulan. Context. Yeah, that is true, Vertvich. We did play in the Qualifier to the Speed Chess Championship 2018. I beat Eric, but it was a really close call, close match. Okay, so I gave away my pawn in the center. I was kind of hoping he wouldn't take it, but at the same time, he had to take it. Because otherwise, it would just be a complete disaster, his position. Um... But I have a pretty nice development advantage. I think I'm doing pretty good. Yeah, it was decided in like the last game of the day. Okay. Honestly, I've really misplayed this. Okay, he blundered a pawn. But if he had done something else, I feel like I misplayed that. 
there was no need to give away the pawn in the center. And once he takes that pawn, he also kind of gives his knight the ability to go back where it came from. Does online chess damage improvement in your opinion? No. I, I think just playing chess in general is good for your good for getting better. His king is never getting out. It doesn't matter that it's an end game. His king is the end of him. Kind of missed rook a8, but it's probably going to be fine. This is definitely going to be fine. Oh. Forgot about time being a thing. But it doesn't really matter. Uh, Marius, I think you're the only one. I don't really care. Even if they get stuck in the ice, the boat is well equipped to deal with it. I mean, they can stay on that boat forever. They can stay on that boat until the summer. I was paying some attention while they were still outdoors, stuck in the cold. But I think they're fine now. It's been big in the Norwegian news, Vertwich. There's a, there's a Norwegian explorer who went across from Alaska. From Alaska, they took a boat into like the, the Bering Strait, the kind of Russian Canada-ish side of the North Pole. And then they skied across. And they miscalculated how much food they needed, how long it was going to take. So they had to have a boat come pick them up. Yeah, yeah. thanks for the game, Spectre. Good game. I don't know if there's any English links. Random name. I think only Norwegians care about that boat, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, okay, we got 12 more minutes. That means we got time for one or two more games. Uh, uh, Dinikognitov. In Dinikognitov. Uh, coming in with a Twitch Prime, crushing me in the game, and then rewarding me with a Twitch Prime sub. Thank you so much. Incentivizing losing more games. That's the way to do it. Only do your subs after you beat me. Last night, I dreamt about chess where you deal 1 to 100% damage of the opponent's pieces randomly when you try to capture it. That is such a good concept, Cactu. That is brilliant. I might steal that, to be honest. But yeah, I guess you caught too much of the Fortnite stream yesterday. It really affected your subconscious. <laughs>
Okay, but what I was saying, I have time for two more games. So, give me your challenge quickly and we'll make it happen. The number one person to send a challenge is Conti. Playing with the Thai flag, but I don't, I'm not sure he is Thai. Because it's kind of late over there. Or is it the Laos flag? I think it's the Thai, right? Bishop d7. Okay, so normally we play this opening against area. And he actually killed me the last time round. Uh, but area always goes bishop g7. Um, I don't get a lot of practice in this bishop d7 line. But I'm guessing bishop b5 is a good move here as well. And then I vaguely remember that I should castle and then go rook d1. There's not going to be a lot of subscribers if we follow the only sub after having beaten the hammer rule. Yeah, you might have a point there. Although judging by my rating and the beating it's taken the last couple of weeks, there's definitely quite a few people beating me. Uh, double O bond. Yes, I'm back. The Norwegian chess audience has had my attention for a week, but now I'm back for the Twitch peeps. Um, I feel like this move is important. I feel like. I was supposed to remember what you do here. Maybe try this one, right? Putting the knight into the center. It's got to be pretty good. Hammer will let you win if you promise to sub afterwards. I would trade some rating points for money. Yeah. That's why you get a high rating. No. I guess that's not fully accurate. Sometimes when I participate in a tournament where there's not a lot of strong players, there are times during such events where I feel like I'm trying to trade rating for money. Because basically, even if I lose rating, I might win the tournament. So it's kind of a high risk, but decent reward scheme. Okay, let's try this move. It looks threatening. I'm kind of scared he's going to take my pawn, but normally people are too scared to take pawns like these. Wow, that's quite the emote, potless flower. Uh, he's threatening my queen. Well, I can threaten his knight, so I'm not too concerned. Wow, I can threaten his knight, his pawn, and protect my own pawn all at the same time. That was just too tempting to resist. How good is Yasser at Blitz? I would think he's pretty decent. Random name. I gotta do something about my obsolete Mubot commands. How do you guys feel about the new e icons on Twitch? The mod icon got a lot better. The mod icon was so ugly previously. 
Uh, I'm threatening to capture this one, right? Yes. The answer is yes. Yes, I was. Let's protect the queen just in case he gets funky. Let's just take it. Who cares? We're trading pieces. I'm a piece up. I don't mind some trades. I did allow him to capture on, on C2. Not sure that was super clever of me, but I'm probably good. A6, queen takes B7, rook takes C2. I can probably just even take the pawn on A6 because my bishop is protecting my king. Wow, Ulan! Are you kidding me? That's quite a few Christmas emotes it's actually not what i meant by icons but it's pretty sweet regardless the reindeer is nice i feel like a lot of them are not really christmas related at all The reindeer, I think, is my favorite. Turtle dove? How is that Christmas related at all? I'm not sure. Okay, last game of the day. I have no incoming challenges. If you want to play, this is the moment. Send me a challenge ASAP if you have a Chess24 premium membership. Hansen is better at Blitz than Yasser. That is not very controversial, I think, we wimps. Is the Twitch chat more active than the Chess24 chat? Yeah, a little bit, Spectre. Uh, Jark, I'm not uh, doing uh, rematches, though. Um, I was going to give uh, a new player a chance because we played, right? I guess that is the optimal time to end the stream when there are no new people challenging to a game. We ran out of people to play against. And so it's the correct time to end the stream. Um, and we're gonna see if we can raid someone. Uh, Tori is live. Anyone else? Let's see if there's some chess. chess That's a lot of noise. I thought I had my sound off for the streams, but what do you know? Um, let's see, Tori is alive. Who else? I don't know this person. I don't know this person. I don't know this person. Kostya, maybe Kostya. Okay, I think we'll, we'll send the raid to Tori. Thank you everyone for watching. I'll be back at the same time tomorrow. 7 p.m. Oslo time. That's 1 p.m. Eastern. Uh, be nice to Tori. Uh, she's made so much improvements uh, compared to when she started out. Um, and I hope to see you back tomorrow. Bye.